Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today's video, I'm going to be going over each of the best money making methods for each skill in RuneScape 3. This video idea was inspired by Flipping Old School. He made a video similar to this, but for Old School RuneScape. So I thought it would be really interesting to see the best money making methods for each skill in RuneScape 3. Since there are a lot of skills in RuneScape 3, 28 to be exact, I'm not going to be able to go over each method in depth, however I will mention what the method is, as well as briefly discuss how you actually do this method, and of course what it will earn you, um, so I won't be able to go too in depth in every method. Now that being said, if you guys have any questions about any of the methods mentioned in the video, let me know in the description down below and I'll try and help you guys out. Also, I will be leaving timestamps in the description for you guys if you guys want to jump to a specific skill. Anyway guys, let's get in the video and I really hope you enjoy. So starting off with our first skill, I'm actually going to be grouping all of the combat skills together. So this is going to include attack, strength, defense, ranged, prayer, magic, and constitution. So we are going to be grouping these seven skills together since they are all combat related skills. So obviously the best money maker for combat is bossing. So I just want to briefly talk about some bosses that are extremely profitable. Um, one being Raksha right now, which is the new boss that was released. This boss is a absurd amount of GP per hour if you know how to do it properly. I wouldn't be able to give an exact GP per hour for Raksha since we don't know the drop rates for, for this boss already, but a rough estimate would be about 40 mil per hour. And you can get this from a lot of other different bosses like Angel of Death. You can also get it from uh, even Araxes 20 mil per hour, Virago's 20 mil. Um, Vindicta can be quite profitable as well, and this is a mid-tier boss. So bossing is just extremely profitable in RuneScape 3 right now. The prices on these bosses have been going through the roof, um, so basically all of the bosses are extremely profitable, and those are just a few that I have mentioned. So moving on to our next skill, we have rune crafting, and the best money maker for rune crafting right now is actually crafting air runes with the Wicked Hood. You can make about 12 to 13 mil per hour, and 99 rune crafting is required to maximize the profit. Also, to maximize profit, you will require Hero's Welcome for the 5% extra runes. The Infinity Ethereal Outfit will give you some more uh, rune essence uh, inventory. Also, the Pouch Protector is super helpful. This is a relic that allows pouches not to degrade. Then also, you'll need all the rune crafting pouches. An Arcane Apotosaurus, which also does require 98 farming with the farm tokens. That way, you will be able to craft more elemental runes. You should also gain around 60,000 rune crafting XP per hour while doing this method. Now there is quite a bit to this method, but I will briefly go over it. First off, you will want to make a preset with all five of the rune pouches. You will also want to bring one power burst of sorcery, as well as fill the rest of your inventory and your abyssal lurker with rune essence or pure essence. Now, as I mentioned, if you do have 98 farming, you can put an arcane apoterosaur and one of the animal pens on the ranch out of time. This will allow you to actually increase your multiplier for each elemental rune by plus two if you do activate the farm totems with the tier two perk. So this will help boost your profit by quite a bit. Also, if you do have Wicked Hood teleport tokens, this is going to be really helpful. It will make the teleports to the altar basically instant. Um, so if you do have those, that will be really helpful. Basically, for this method, you will want to continually be doing the same thing. So first off, you'll want to open your bank and load the preset. Then use hotkeys to fill your torso and also all of your room pouches. Um, and then after this, you will want to then use your uh, Wicked Hood to go to the Air Altar. Enter the Air Altar, use the Power Burst of Sorcery, and then craft your Air Runes. You can then go and repeat this and just continue this until you are completely done with all of your Wicked Hood teleports. And so that is basically just a quick version of the method, and you can make about 12 mil per hour doing this. Moving on to our next skill, which is construction. 
Now construction, there isn't actually a profitable way of making money while actually training the skill. However, you can make some money in your player own house. So this method is going to require 67 construction and you'll make around 3 mil per hour. It's going to be making teleport tabs. Now the heart teleport tabs are the best ones to make. However, they do require a few requirements. Um, otherwise, you can make the Softenum Slayer Dungeon teleport tabs. Um, this is a really good money maker. It's 3 mil per hour, but it is really AFK. Now, you don't actually get construction XP. You do get magic XP. So, um, it isn't quite a construction money maker, but um, since you do require a player on house and the lectern to make these, I decided to consider it as the construction money maker since it's the closest one to having a money making method in construction. Moving on to the next skill, we have Dungeoneering. This is a pretty easy one. I'm going to say the best moneymaker for Dungeoneering is Elite Dungeons. You do actually gain quite a bit of Dungeoneering XP while you are completing Elite Dungeons. I believe it's right around 100k to 200k per hour depending on the amount of runs you can get in. And the GP per hour is also really great as well. You can make anywhere from 10 to 20 mil per hour depending on your efficiency with Elite Dungeons. Also, there is three elite dungeons, so there is a bit of variety that you can choose from. And you can do solo up to a group of three, so it can be a lot of fun. And you have a bit of variety or customization as to what you want to do with these elite dungeons. The next skill I'm going to look at is agility. Agility actually does have a pretty good money-making method, and that is doing the Anachronia agility course. While doing this course, you will get some codex pages which you can then turn into an ability codex. You'll need 750 of these codex pages to make a tradable double surge codex which does sell for around 57 mil. It should take you around 10 hours to get enough codex pages to make this codex so it is right around 5 mil per hour. Next we have Herblore. Now Herblore, it was kind of tough to find a money making method for this since it is more of a buyable skill. Now what I have here is making summoning potions. To make these you need the spirit weed uh, potions unfinished as well as the cockatrice eggs and then you can make the uh, summoning potions with them. Now you will want to make sure you are using a portable well when doing this. Also if you do have the modified um, botanist mask, this is really helpful as well since it will give you a chance to make an extra potion. Um, of course having the scroll of cleansing is really helpful as well. And then also if you are using botanist's amulets, this will help with the profit as well as factory outfit. If you do have three pieces of this, it will increase your profit by hour by increasing the chance of creating a 4-dose potion to 10%, um, which is obviously a lot better. Um, now doing this method, you will kind of want all of these bonuses or boosts that I have mentioned, because overall, if you are just making these summoning potions without the scroll of cleansing, portable wells, the botanist mask, factory outfit, and botanist amulets, you will be making negative profit. That's why I put the profit at 0 to 5 mil. Um, it is because it is really dependent on all of these boosts as well as the cost you are buying these. When I tested this out, the cockatrice eggs actually bought for above the grand exchange price, which does cut into the profit a lot. So this is a risky method, but you can also make quite a bit if you have all the recommendations. Now our next method is thieving. This is a pretty simple method. It can actually be done at a low level and you can make about 3 mil per hour doing it. It's stealing cave goblin wire. The cave goblin wire is located in Dorgish Khan and it can be stolen with level 36 thieving. Um, it does respawn every about 10 seconds so you can make around 3 mil per hour doing this. You do get about 20 uh, thieving XP every time you do manage to uh, steal one of these, so you should get around 12k thieving XP per hour doing this. Now, the next method is crafting, and this method is a bit strange. It's going to be making the clockwork, and you can make about 3 mil per hour doing this. So, um, because crafting is actually a tough skill to find a money make method in, it's mostly a viable skill um, where you will have to pay a lot of money to train it. Now making clockwork, it is really profitable. It only requires one steel bar to make and it can be made at a crafting table too inside your player own house. It does require level eight crafting to make 
And each of these steel bars, which is priced about 800 GP each, will make one clockwork, and the clockwork is priced at about 3.6k. It is actually used to restore an artifact in archaeology, so it is needed by some players, which is why it is somewhat valuable. Um, this is a pretty AFK method as well, which makes it a little bit better. And so next we have fletching. Fletching, the best money making method for this is making headless arrows. And you can make about 1 mil per hour doing this. This is actually a free to play method as well. All you'll need is arrow shafts and feathers and you can make the headless arrows with this. You get very little fletching XP per hour doing this, but you can make around 1 mil per hour. Fletching is more of a buyable skill as well, so there aren't really too many money making methods with it. Most of the ways of training this skill, you will have to spend lots of money. And the next skill is Slayer, and you can make about 10 mil per hour doing certain creatures in Slayer. It is tough to pick just one, but I'm going to mention a few that are really profitable. One being the Living Wyverns. Living Wyverns are a really great creature to kill for money. They are about 10 mil per hour, and they do require a level 96 Slayer to kill. Of course, this obviously does require combat as well, and it could sort of be put in with the combat skills um, also, but I did want to separate the two. Um, so Living Wyverns is one really great creature to kill for money. They drop the Wyvern Bones as well as some uniques like the Wyvern Crossbow. Now, there are also a lot of other Slayer creatures that are really profitable as well, including Edamu. Edamu do require level 115 Dungeoneering as well, but they are extremely profitable. You can make up to 20 mil per hour killing those if you are doing it really effectively, um, since they do drop the blood uh, amulet shards. Also, killing Ripper Demons are really profitable as well. You can make a ton of money, especially if you are making the Ripper Demon binding contracts with that, um, which does require level 68 archaeology as well as all of the Infernal Source mysteries completed. And moving on to Hunter, we have Big Game Hunter. This is a really good hunter training method. You can make over 10 mil per hour doing this, and you will also gain a few hundred thousand Hunter XP per hour as well. So it is a really fun skilling boss to do, um, since you do get some pretty good Hunter XP and some really good money. Now, there is a little bit of mechanics to this that you will need to learn if you don't already know. Um, essentially, the dinosaur will be running around and you'll need to stay away from its radius um, before it turns red. Um, once it does turn red, the dinosaur will basically run away and you'll need to restart the encounter. Um, and you're just trying to build these scorpions and poison them with uh, spears and then bait the middle to actually uh, attack the dinosaur and deal damage to it. That's essentially what Big Game Hunter is. Definitely check out a guide if you're interested in this. It's a really great money making method and can make you 10 to 12 mil per hour. And moving on to number eight, we have divination. Now the best money making method for divination would be collecting cursed energy and you can make about six mil per hour doing this. However, cursed energy is in the wilderness. So this is a bit risky and the GP per hour does sort of vary just because um, it does depend on if you're going to be encountering players trying to kill you or not. So another really great money method is incandescent energy. It's more consistent and uh, we can really get a good amount of GP per hour on it. It's also right around 5 to 6 mil per hour. Um, also, if you do have the Divine Conversion Relic from Archaeology, it boosts this a lot. You can convert all of your memories at once, which makes it really time-saving. Also with this method, if you are using a Nightmare Muspa, it will increase your GP per hour as well as the Enrichment Aura. This will help as well. Um, you will need level 95 Divination to do this method with Incandescent Energy. If you don't have this, again, there is Cursed Energy, but it is in the Wilderness. And moving on to our next skill, which is Mining. You can make around 2 mil per hour training this skill or mining some ores. And the best way to do this is mining Light Amnica. Dark Amnica is also really good as well. Um, however, uh, Light Amnica is a little bit higher as of right now. Um, now, Light Amnica, it is pretty easy to mine. It's just like any other ore. Uh, just make sure you are using your best pickaxe. If you do have an uh, augmented pickaxe, make sure to have some really good perks on it. 
Um, now, another thing to mention is the stamina bar with mining. Of course, if you are more active, uh, actively clicking the ore, you will gather it a lot faster. So that will obviously increase your GP per hour. Um, but overall, that's basically it to mining. And next we have smithing, which can make you around 3 mil per hour. And it actually makes you 3 mil per hour pretty AFK as well. And that's just going to be smithing um, any kind of bars. There's a lot of them that are really profitable right now. Eldarune bars are profitable as well as the Necronium bars. They're actually one of the best, um, but you can test the profit out on each of the bars at any given time. I don't want to mention one bar in particular right now because the prices do vary and they do change over time. Um, so I just want to say just test out the profit for each bar. If you do have a high enough um, smithing level, you will get a 10% chance to make an extra bar. This is really important because it will increase your profit by a lot. Also, if you do have the modified uh, blacksmith helmet, it will give you an extra 1% chance to make an extra bar. Also, if you are using the superheat form prayer, this will obviously increase the amount of bars you can uh, smith per hour. Um, and then also if you do have these smelting gauntlets, it does make it so you can smelt 60 bars um, per inventory instead of just 28 and they'll go straight to your metal bank. So this is another really helpful item to use. Now moving on to our next skill, we have fishing. Now fishing, there is a lot of ways to make money. However, there isn't one that makes you a lot. So the best money making method for fishing is catching sailfish. This does require level 97 fishing to uh, actually catch these fish. They are located in the fishing hub. You can fish them in two different locations, one from a regular fishing spot where you will get 400 XP per catch, and then also you can get 420 XP when you catch them from a swift sailfish spot. And so next we have cooking. Now cooking it is pretty difficult to find a really good money maker for this and it does depend heavily on the grand exchange. So this method right here is making tuna potatoes. It was pretty difficult to find this method and it might change over time just because you are buying and selling a lot of items on the grand exchange. But first off as you can see I am buying the sliced tuna and using the cooked sweet corn on it. And this combination makes the tuna and corn. You can then use the tuna and corn on the potato with butter to make the tuna potatoes. You'll make around two mil per hour doing this. But again, if you are planning on doing this method, make sure you do test it out first before buying in bulk, just to make sure that the profit margins are there. Now moving on to our next skill, we have fire making, which again is a really difficult skill to find a money maker in, since you're essentially just burning logs. Now one money maker that I did find is applying sacred oil. It basically makes you zero GP per hour. I literally made a few coins profit from doing this and it was using the sacred oil on magic logs to make magic pyre logs. You do get 60 fire making XP every time you apply one of these. Um, however, it doesn't really make you any profit. I literally made a few hundred coins doing this. So again, it is kind of risky because you are buying and selling on the Grand Exchange, but it is an interesting method if you're looking to train fire making without spending any money. Now moving on to our next method, we have wood cutting, which is one of my favorite skills. Now, of course, this is a gathering skill, so it is a pretty easy skill to find a money maker in. It's going to be to chop the best tree in the game, which is the elder tree. You get elder logs from this. They're priced at about 8k each, so you can see that you will make quite a bit of money from it. If you do have the dwarven chain axe, you will actually be able to collect double the logs, which obviously will double the profit. But you can make right around 1 mil per hour doing this. It is kind of AFK since each tree does last about 7 minutes. Um, so in that aspect it is pretty decent. So it's, it's a nice AFK money maker. And so moving on to our next money making method we have farming. Now farming is a difficult one. I didn't really put GP per hour because the best method is farming runs. Especially when doing uh, the herbs. Now, since it does take time for the herbs to grow, it was tough to calculate a GP per hour, but you will get about an average of 120k per farming patch um, if you are planting the spirit weeds. Now, on average, you will make 120k profit per herb patch, and there are seven in the game, meaning you will make over 800k every time you do harvest your herbs at each of these patches. 
Herbs do take 80 minutes to grow, however, it will only take about 5 minutes to plant all of these herbs. So that being said, if you do calculate the GP per hour based on how much time it takes, it is exceptionally high, over 50 mil per hour. But if you do count the 80 minute um, growth time, then it is a lot lower. Now moving on to summoning, the best money making method for summoning is creating scrolls while the Amlod voice of Saren is active in Priftinus. This will allow you to make an extra 2 scrolls per pouch, so instead of getting 10 scrolls per pouch you'll get 12, um, which does increase your GP power on a lot of different uh, pouches. Now the best one is the uh, smoke devil scrolls, you can turn them into the dust cloud scrolls. On paper, with the Grand Exchange price, you will be making about 50 coins per scroll of profit. However, sometimes it is difficult to sell the scrolls on the Grand Exchange for its listed price, so do be wary of that. Um, another really great pouch to turn into scrolls is the Steel Titan pouches. You can turn them into the Steel of Legend scrolls. This is another well-known moneymaker when the Amulet Voice of Saren is active. But again, just make sure that these scrolls are selling for a profit on the Grand Exchange first. And so moving on to invention, we have creating equipment siphons or divine charges. Now, the th only thing you will want to do with this method is you're going to be basically disassembling stuff for the entire hour before you kind of make the equipment siphons or divine charges. So first off, you're really going to want to disassemble either maple logs or magic logs for these simple components. These are then used to either make the divine charges. You'll need 20 simple parts as well as 225 incandescent energy to make one divine charge. And then if you are looking to make the equipment siphons, you will need 200 simple components which you will be gathering from the magic or maple logs. Then you'll also need dexterous components. You'll need five of these, which you can collect from disassembling magic short bows. And then also you'll need precious components, which can be obtained by disassembling gold bars or rings of slaying. Now, also, if you do have the uh, scavenging perk on some of your equipment and you are using this throughout Slayer or just PVM and combat, you will have a lot of these components already, which is why you can make the equipment siphons for the most profit. Because if you have some extra dexterous and precious components, using the uh, simple components to make the equipment siphons are really profitable since each equipment siphon is worth 180k. And moving on to our last skill, we have archaeology, where you can make around 5 mil per hour sifting soil. So right now the best soil to sift is the aerated sediment which does come from the Stormguard Citadel. In order to maximize your profit you will want 110 or higher archaeology so you will get the most when sifting the soil. Also having an upgraded archaeology soil box will help with this as well. Um, as well as Grace of the Elves inside of the porters so you can transport the materials straight to the bank. Now, if you do have the Master Archaeologist outfit, it will have the time of sifting the soil. So this is really helpful and will double the profit if you have this um, and put it up to that 4.5 or 5 mil per hour. If you don't have this, it will be about 2.5 mil per hour, um, so quite a bit lower. Also, using a Water Fiend Binding Contract is really helpful as well since it will give you a chance to get some extra materials. Um, but other than that, that is basically it for this method. It is pretty simple and it's also really AFK as you can see um, since you will be sifting the soil for over two minutes at a time. And so anyway guys, those are all of the best money making methods for each skill in RuneScape 3. It was quite difficult to find some of these methods since a lot of these skills are viable skills. And there are some pretty niche methods that I did mention in this video. A lot of them really do depend on the grand exchange price. So if you guys are trying a lot of these methods that do require buying and selling items on the grand exchange, make sure that there is a pretty decent profit margin before you do those methods. Anyway guys, I really hope you did enjoy the video. And if you did, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe for more RuneScape 3 content. And I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.